<laughs> Folks, allow me to introduce Ruddy Daniels. He's been involved with Taekwondo or TKD since 1992. Uh, Grandmaster Tai E. Lee asked him to take over the Dunlop Public School branch. And since then, he's been instructing at the Mackey House in Crystal Beach, main branch at 1400 Curling and Westboro Academy. He's a fourth degree black belt master. He's got his uh, 12 year old uh, young lad also in the, in the program. And young lad, uh, Jacob is involved in the or is at the rank of Black Belt Poom. And that's as of July 2019. Congratulations, Ruddy. That's awesome. That is really awesome. Also, he's involved in playing sports, charity community events. He enjoys Latin dance, apparently, and occasionally provides salsa lessons. So if you're, if you're not feeling smelt on the, uh, on the combat floor, he can help you glide across the floor with your lady <laughs> or your partner, I should say. Uh, he officiates basketball games. He owns and publishes Main Street Magazine here in Ottawa. It's a Black-owned online digital magazine business. And he, value, he adds value content, uh, resources, and educates people. He works in partnership also with Notion High. And Ruddy, I'm going to stop there because that's this. The rest of the stuff is your thunder. Ruddy, over to you, sir. Okay, cool. I guess now would be a time to share my screen. Absolutely, sir. Okay. Do, 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 do. Where did it go? All right, there we go. And you're well, sharing. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. Good, good to go. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you, thank you for having me. This is a, a great opportunity to to talk about something that I'm passionate about, outside of my dancing and my basketball officiating and meeting with people. Uh, this is one of the other things that I, that I really enjoy. I was um, <clears throat> been teaching Taekwondo for quite some time, well, since '92. Um, since I was a young kid, I remember <clears throat> my the legendary Bruce Lee. Um, he died when, when, when I was 10 uh, in 73, I was born in 63. And I remember going to see Enter the Dragon at the Rialto Theater in, in Jamaica. And it was, a, it was a tough in because everybody wanted to go. And unlike Canada, where everybody stands and form lines in Jamaica, they just crowd the entrance. <laughs> so, so you had to throw elbows and you had to kick your way in basically or climb over people to get into the theater. It was that packed. So my brother and I uh, managed to get in and we saw Bruce Lee and I've, I've always been just enthralled with the idea of the martial arts ever since then. So after I finished university, I started training in Taekwondo at uh, 1300 Carling Avenue with Grandmaster Italian Lee. And uh, once I achieved my black belt, um, Grandmaster Lee approached me and asked if I would uh, be open to, um, to uh, instruct some of his, his brand schools, um, which I thought, well, that's, that would be quite an honor. Uh, there was a few brand schools that were available and they were um, under the Lighthouse program back then uh, in, in the schools, after school programs. So I started uh, instructing um, Taekwondo in, in, at Dunlop Public School out in the south end of the city. And, um, and that's actually where I met uh, um, uh, a, another friend who is now a close friend and he's actually Jacob's godfather, uh, JC Charon. So uh, JC joined he and his, uh, and his two kids. Um, his daughter is, is a black belt. His son, for whatever reason, stopped at black stripe one level before black belt. So he never achieved <laughs> the black belt. So I've always enjoyed um, instructing uh, the kids, teens, and adults, because it's it's a uh, it's a program that that is can be a lifetime thing for for many people, similar to some other sports like golf or basketball or tennis, and and dancing. Um, so I started there with um, uh, with with Grandmaster Lee, and then after that, I went out on my own and decided I wanted to continue this, and I reached out to many schools and sent out letters and. Re requests and the Westboro Academy um, accepted uh, my invitation and they joined on board. And um, it turns out that the, the then president of the school son was uh, participating in, in martial arts. So it was a great fit for that school. And I was at that school for 14 years or more. And actually we stopped 
throughout the COVID because they changed to a different location. And recently I went back and I just started back again um, in uh, this month, actually, to instruct uh, Taekwondo at the kids again. So it's been uh, cool. I've also been instructing some of the former students from there and um, um, they're now moved on. Of course, some of them have, but I'm also teaching some of them online. So just to introduce Taekwondo, it's Mukwan is Grand Master Lee's system. Um, it's a traditional Korean martial art, as I mentioned, and Mukwan is Grand Master Lee's system, triangle system, and it's based on being good at home, school, and the Taekwondo. So he always has this triangle to maintain a balance, because as you know, if you see bridges and anything that is built, there's always that triangle system within that bridge, which because it, it has a lot of strength and, and equality on all three sides. So Grandmaster Lee brought uh, Taekwondo here to Ottawa. A lot of the schools that have grown and started um, since then, uh, a lot of the students came from him. Um, so the Durian Taekwondo and other uh, martial arts school that are in Ottawa and have grown in Ottawa, um, Grandmaster Lee had a play in it in that the students started with, with, with him when he first arrived. So as I mentioned, Mukwan simply means training for the harmonization of body, mind, and spirit. And that's Grand Master Lee's uh, uh, system of Taekwondo. Um, the, other, the other thing that, that's really cool is the, the different values that Taekwondo um, brings to, to us. Uh, training and maintaining your focus on, on what you do. Uh, because the, the kids who are learning and understanding their uh, taking the lessons um, will improve on their, their Taekwondo skills. They'll improve on their concentration in school, focus, improve on their grades, and so on. So it's, it, it transcends that. For adults who are taking it, um, it helps them uh, to maintain a balance with their school life, with their work and, um, and home life as well. dad is not feeling up to it, then the kids are going to kind of push them because they have to get to Taekwondo and vice versa. If the kids are going, oh, I don't feel like going well, mom and dad are going to go, hey, you know what, we got to go because uh, we're going to do that. Grandmaster Lee also um, has ran a tournament annually now for over 30 years um, because uh, the city of Ottawa actually proclaimed the 31st of May as Tai Lee Day in the city of Ottawa. Um, and uh, the, the tournament is held at Algonquin College, and there it's a crowd of people. Grandmaster Lee has a demo team, and a demo team demonstrate board breaking, flying kicks, jumping over bodies. The kids get to spar free, non-contact. They get to walk away with gold medals, silver, bronze medal, participation medals, or big trophies. Actually, if you go to Westboro Academy, you'll find a, a bunch of trophies there from all of the students who have gone through there, who have uh, received awards and, and so forth. Um, Taekwondo creates a balance in physical and uh, strength and agility, flexibility, and things like that. I'll get a little further more um, talking to those as we go. Um, as a martial art program, Taekwondo works with your intellect and physical capabilities uh, developed through personal best. Although it became an Olympic sport, which is something that Grandmaster Lee really wanted and he pushed forward for. Um, it is also just a great way to maintain positivity and building people's confidence over time. Um, we have in Taekwondo, we teach basic blocks and punching techniques, kicking techniques, but Taekwondo was actually developed as a form of self-defense. It was never uh, brought about as a, as a method of getting into fights or to struggle, but Taekwondo is, is actually the opposite. It was created um, back in the day um, in, in uh, South Korea when the villagers were being attacked, they were taught how to defend themselves. So it was basically created to defend family, homes, children, and the weak. 
and um, and that's where it, it evolved it evolved from. Um, body, mind, and spirit. There's Chidakche represents knowledge, good character, and a strong and healthy body. Grand Master Lee emphasizes that in in his program. I emphasize that in in mine. I play mind games with the, with the kids when I do you know knowledge, good character, strong, healthy body. Um, talk about. I speak a lot about bullying for kids, especially, you know, Margaret Ann, we were chatting about that briefly before the meeting and a lot of kids get bullied and stuff. So it helps with their confidence to know that, hey, you know, one person might think this of me, but it's not about that. Right. And so we focus a lot on building that character and and try to teach the kids to be like a duck and let the water roll off your back. And, you know, as as formerly but firmly and always have been always we as a black individual i've been picked on a lot too for my color the, the skin the hair and 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 snarky comments and and things along those lines and even before taekwondo it was for me it was just okay you know just turn the other cheek because my grandmother insisted that was the best way to go <laughs> so so i i uh, i continue to do that but this is something that we we try to to uh Im embellish a lot in our in the program. Pumse's uh, Taekwondo has patterns or Pumse. Pumse is obviously the Korean word for, for patterns. And it's a series of movements that incorporate defense with counter offense. And what I mean by that is we always start off our patterns with a block, for example. Now uh, we never start off with a punch. So we start off on a defense and we learn to block, whether it's a low block, a middle block, or a high block, and then we counter by attacking. And that's what we do. Um, so it's also a great mental uh, practice for adults and, and things too, because one of the issues that, that people have sometimes is, is remembering things. By having to learn patterns over and repeat repetitive stuff, it reminds you of other things that you can do when you're at work. Sometimes if you're having a stressful day, you can mentally just just digress for a moment and think about the patterns, go through the patterns and 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 review things and bring yourself back down and calm and that sort of stuff. So benefit the patterns. You know, some people go, oh, but it's repetitive. Yes, well, everything that you do well is repetitive. Um, and if you repeat it well enough, it becomes second nature, you know, just like drinking coffee as Bernie's doing or tea. Um, it's a repetitive action. Flip the cup up and, and drink away. I wish most people would do more of that with water as opposed to coffee and tea. <laughs> uh, we have spar sparring. Um, just go back quickly uh, to Pumse. There's a, a lady here in Ottawa who also is part of Tai Li program. And she does Pumse uh, tournaments where she's traveled around the country and in the US. And she's won awards because she goes and does pattern. And no contact sparring. In the uh, in again, um, we have different types of sparring. Um, your internet connection is unstable. Um, is that we have one step sparring? So that means that somebody will attack you with one step. Then we have multiple steps. So a two step sparring, where someone again will take two steps towards you. You would take two steps back before you defend. And then of course there's three step sparring. Same thing. Someone attacks, takes three steps. It's like bringing them in so that you can then defend and, and setting them up. Um, so then we have also combat, which requires grappling and throwing and, and that. Um, and full contact sparring, you, we put on a hogu head protector, chest protector, leg and shin protector. And then we, we spar. There's usually a referee obviously involved in that, in helping in support um, of, of the the sparring. Blocking techniques, as I mentioned, protecting your head, torso, and lower body. So high block to protect your head, very important. Uh, fighting, people have to be in the right positioning for what they're doing. They don't want to keep their hands too low because then their head is unprotected or too high or, or too close to your face, for example, because sometimes you have your hand here and all I have to do is hit your hand and you punch yourself in the face. Um, so then I'm not doing any work. I'll, you're knocking yourself out. I've said that to my students sometimes. I say, you know, you punch yourself in the face. Don't go home and tell your parents that I hit you. I hit your hand. You hit yourself. So 
<laughs> so leave that out to it, um, just to get them to understand the importance of locking. Punching techniques, again, same idea, teach the kids how to, uh, and adults actually, some adults, just to make a fist. Uh, many people will make a fist and they'll put their thumb inside their hand like this. And as some of the kids have says, well, I'm protecting my thumb. And I'm going, well, yes, but if you hit an object, you're gonna break your thumb because it's in an awkward position. So you, you need to fold your hands down and then wrap your thumb over your fist, over the other four fingers. And your main focus is that the, the two biggest knuckles, your, your peace sign are, the, are the, actually the knuckles that will make contact. The other ones are, are uh, less strength and uh, most apt will break if, if uh, ended up hitting anything at a solid way. Um, kicking techniques, again, proper movement and body movement. Um, and Taekwondo is really renowned for this, kicks, spinning kicks, jumping kicks, twisting kicks. Um, that's one of the big things when it comes to, uh, to doing Taekwondo and, and the martial arts that way. Self-defense is again, what Taekwondo was created for and teaching people self-defense. My idea about self-defense for people is something that Bruce Lee said in, in the Enter the Dragon movie. It's the art of fighting without fighting. And uh, in the movie, he, there was a bully on the, on the boat and he was knocking over food and, and threatening kids and, and being, being basically mean. So he came up to Bruce Lee and he made a comment. And then Bruce Lee said, well, um, the guy said to him, what's your style? And he says, my style? He goes, it's the art of fighting without fighting. And he goes, well, show me some. And he said, well, we need more room. So then he says, uh, okay, well, where? And he says, well, over on that island, we can take this boat and we'll go on the island. So the guy gets in the boat and what Bruce Lee did was he, he untied the boat and let the guy drift out into the ocean. So there was the art of fighting without fighting. So he didn't have to do anything. Then he handed the rope to one of the kids who was holding on to the rope that he had been bullying this big grown man. So I often say to people, um, it's really important to be self-aware when you're out. A lot of people wear hoodies when they, especially in the winter, but worse than that, people wear the earbuds. So what you've done is you've limited your visuals and you've limited your audio. So what's happened now is when you're walking down the street or, or, or anything around you, you have no visibility. You, you know how they put those blinders on horses so that they don't get distracted? It's the same idea when you wear the hoodie. And a neighbor of mine, when I used to live in Barhaven, she was wearing her hoodie one day um, in the winter time and she was walking her dogs and she was assaulted uh, because she didn't see the person come up behind her and attack her. And so that's always been a big thing for me. When I see people outside with their hoodies on, I've always gone up and said, hey, you know what? You didn't even hear me coming. And I remember one night I was on my way to instruct my Taekwondo class and I was driving behind a And I said, uh, I've been following you for quite some time. <laughs> and, uh, and they took their hood off and they had, uh, back then they had a Walkman. So they had their ears covered. And I said, that is so dangerous, you know, for, for you to do that because you've now limited your visibility, you've limited your, your audio. So chances of something happen to you is, is gonna be greater that way. So I often say to people, hey, if you have a hat, wear the hat. Okay, but don't cover and, and limit your vision so that you can maintain that peripheral thing. And if you need to, just wear one earbud. You can still ear in one ear, but the other one will be open to audio. So that's what I'm talking about when I refer to uh, daily, daily defense. Also, when you travel, and for example, if you're in an unknown place and you take an elevator, I've often said to people, if you wanna see how awkward people are, stand in the elevator and face everybody. And you will see how many people limit their eye contact. They'll look everywhere else, but they won't look at you, right? So this also is a way of the art of fighting without fighting. If there's somebody in that elevator that is may consider attacking you, they're going to think twice because now you have visualized a lot of the people that were in the elevator. So again, that limits things. 
I've also mentioned now these days you can you can start your car. You don't have to have your keys in your hand, but that was always something I would recommend for folks when they were traveling, if they had to go into an alley or, or not an alley, but into an underground garage or something along those lines was to have the key in their hand ready to, to use if they had to use it for, for any way, shape or form. So um, those are just, again, the art of fighting without fighting, being prepared and being aware of, of what's out there. Um, the tenets of Taekwondo is, uh, the definition of tenant is a belief of principles that is held by a group as being true. So in Taekwondo, we do the word clips, C-L-I-P-S, courtesy, loyalty, integrity, perseverance, and self-control. And this is what we teach to, the, to our students, all the kids. Um, they, they have a word sheet that has the Korean terminology and English terminology, and they get to practice that. Um, that's part of their promotion. They have to know the meaning of these words. They are used often and, and so on. So, you know, courtesy, being polite and respectful, loyalty, appreciate and respect people, having integrity, never lie, cheat or steal, perseverance, never give up, always try your best, and self-control, well, staying calm and, and maintaining that, that self-control. Um, a lot of people want to work out, they want to do things. This is where we're going to getting into the business aspect. But there's a lot of people out there that is afraid of change. Change is like, ah! Oh my God, I can't do that. So um, change, it, as I said, can be scary uh, word for many. Maybe we can soften it by using another word like adapt or adjust. And I came up with this acronym for change. C is can't, H is have, A, any, new, genuine engagement. Um, that's my acronym for change. That's how people might look at change is, oh my gosh, it, this is something new. I can't do it. They freeze up. They're not interested in doing that. So for me, it's learning to, instead of saying it's a change, it's an adaptation of what you already do. It's an add on to what you already do. And it's an adjustment to what you already do. So if you think of it that way, instead of, oh my gosh, change, you may be easier to say, you know what, I am going to start to work out. I am going to start to, to uh, drink more water. I am going to take breaks um, at home and get up off my chair instead of sitting there all day long. <laughs> so but the key thing, again, to change is discipline. I have to decide whether or not I'm going to do it. If you decide to join a gym, you have to be disciplined enough to get up every day or all the times to go and, um, and go to the gym and work out. Uh, you have to decide that you're going to do it. And if you're not going to do that and you're going to work out at home, then how am I going to do that? Be consistent. If you're going to start it, be consistent in doing so and make a commitment, a conscious commitment. Just like in your business and your work, you make a commitment to work, you make a commitment to do um, the job that you're doing. And of course, making sure that you give yourself ample time, whether it's three minutes, five minutes, or 15 minutes. It's, it's all up to you in regards, in regards to that. So let's talk about the things that we, we don't spend much time thinking about, our muscles. When our muscles get tight, it leads to dysfunction. Dysfunction can lead to discomfort and eventually injury. Um, so it's really important to stand up, exercise, move, movement. And often it's also important to recognize that movement, whether you're active or inactive, you can still get tight muscles, right? So if you're active and you're getting tight muscles, you need to stretch. If you're inactive and getting tight muscles, you need to stretch. <laughs> so either way, you're gonna have to do that stretching. Um, that's why I was mentioning Ernie to, earlier to Bernie, have the water instead of the coffee. Uh, our body is made up of, the majority is water, right? And so if we don't replenish it, our skins get dry, we get um, uh, you know, um, dehydrated, our bodies, are dehydrated and sometimes when that happens your it's your body telling you i need to be replenished and so we need to keep that stuff in mind when we're doing that flexibility i had to put this in bold is the fountain of youth there are people that can barely uh touch their knee uh, <laughs> uh, some people have just either never have <clears throat> or or do not 
And um, I'm working with a, a, a person now who used to be able to have a full split and touch, and now they can barely bend over. Um, so the key again is just maintain a little bit every day. Um, the, the, the thing to remember about stretching, and you, you can sit in your chair like I'm doing right now, and I can stretch. I can do the stretch here, side to side. I can stretch my arm like this. I can do my fingers because your hands are normally in a position holding a mouse, for example. After a while, this that corporal tunnel thing. So flex the hands, rotate the hands, move them around, um, flex them, extend and, and, and keep them out. Bring them, make them tight, extend. You'll feel a, a big difference in that. So you don't have to do a lot to, to stretch um, and, and to make sure you maintain those, those things. Um, the three tips that I have for that is, or the three T's is temperature. So never try and exercise or work out and stretch without warming up your body. That's where the temperature part comes in, okay? Uh, tension, I prefer to use the word tension versus pain. Pain. <laughs> Pain is, is like change. You go, oh, that's painful. But if you go, oh, okay, there's a little bit of tension there. Great, okay. Well, we'll work a little bit through the tension by breathing. 90%, if not the majority of people who stretch, hold their breath. I'll never understand why, but they do. And all that does is it means you're lessening oxygen to your body which means that your, your body isn't getting oxygen, which means it's gonna stay tight and it's gonna have more problems. So temperature, tension, and time, you can stretch, hold for 15, 30 seconds, 45 seconds. And the key to those things as well, uh, when you're doing your time is again, the breathing, in through your nose, out through your mouth, in through your nose, out to your mouth. If you inhale through your mouth, your throat's gonna get dry. Okay, which then makes you tired. Then you're gonna go and over drink the water and then you're gonna get cramps and it just leads one thing to the other. So if you breathe properly and when the stretch is getting, your arm is getting tight and you're stretching and, and the, the tension is there. And if you breathe and, and continue to breathe and inhale and exhale, when you breathe out is when you extend that stretch. Okay, you extend that stretch when you, when you do that. So really important, stretch regularly from head to toe. You can sit in your chair again and work your neck, either side of your neck, you can rotate your head and all that. You can do your shoulders and back and hold. There's two types of stretching. There is the, um, the, the ones where you're, that are called static stretch. That's when you hold things, okay? And anything that you hold, is static. Then there's ballistic. Think of a, a swimmer going to a pool or a boxer going into a ring. They're throwing their arms around. You know, the swimmer shakes their hands out. They shake their feet out. The runner kicks their legs and stuff. That's more of the ballistics type of stretch is to get the body flow, to get the movement and things. So those are that. Hamstrings and glutes, hip flexors, when you sit for a long period of time, the other day I was helping a friend out. I had to follow him to a location where he was picking up a car. I drove him there. Then he picked up the car and I followed him. Then I followed him to Orleans to drop off the car. And then I brought him home. And then we went for lunch. And by the time I got there, it was two hours that I've been sitting. And I slowly had to get out of my car because I didn't realize I've been sitting that long. And then my hip was like, whoa, that's really tied up. And that morning I'd worked out and I'd stretched, but then I sat in the car for two hours in this position, which, you know, just made everything lock up. So again, that's what I mean. When you're sitting at work in your office or at home, I suggest you put a timer on your phone, make it 45 minutes to an hour, put it on, remind yourself so that you get up every 45 minutes to an hour, but do not put it on your desk because all you'll do is reach over and press pause. Put it across the room that you have to get up to go turn it off. Make sure that you put something on that is annoying, that will drive you nuts if you don't go and turn it off. But while you walk over there to turn it off and to restart it, it will get you out of your chair. When you're out of your chair, stretch a little bit. You know, you don't have to do much. I'll just show you nice, simple, just stretch. 
stretch a little bit, just a little tension removal, hands up, reach up here, a little over here, okay? You don't have to spend an hour stretching. You can do a five minute stretch. I did that this morning, five minutes of stretching and, uh, and it was really good. So again, make sure you breathe, deep breaths in and out. And here it is, Bernie, drink water. Lots and lots of water regularly, okay? Makes a huge difference. Uh, I know actually at Carol, uh, when we used to go for our dance things, she always had hot water, um, but she also carried water. But drinking the water, really, really important. Um, before you start any exercise, always check with your doctor. If you're getting started, it's not about working out for half an hour anymore. It's getting it in throughout the day. So you can stretch in the morning, five minutes. You can stretch at night, five minutes. You can do two minutes here, two minutes there. The recommendation, as I said, on the phone, by when you get up, to do the walk. Your home is a great stretching tool too. You can use your steps when you're going up the stairs to do a little stretch. Take one step, two steps up with the other leg, stretch things out, keep your body straight. Always remember the importance that it's, um, it's quality over quantity. So when you're exercising or doing any kind of exercise, do it right. Make sure that you're, you're set yourself up the right way. If you don't know how, speak to someone like myself or the other gentleman that was on that had to leave. Um, but make sure you find out the right way to do the stretching, the right way to do the exercise, so that way you don't end up injured or worse yet, that you quit. Because that's usually what happens. Something happens, they, someone gets hurt and then they don't want to do it anymore, they give up. Um, when you begin, begin with the end in mind, what you want to succeed, make some, some decisions, short-term, long-term goals as to how you want to do this and that. For your business, it's great because you want to be healthy. You want to be mentally and emotionally healthy. Taekwondo can help with that. Martial arts can help with that. Being fit and working out and doing some exercise will only foster good feelings, good emotions, and, and, and things. Um, as I mentioned, start slow. Don't, you wouldn't feed a baby with a big spoon, right? Uh, so again, nice, slow. Yeah, got two minutes left. That's Margaret Ann, yeah. Um, use the proper technique. Do it right, okay? Do it right the first time because if you do it wrong, you're not going to do it a second time because you're going to just say, okay, this is not for me. Um, quality over quantity. Go at your own pace, but move. Keep moving because when you stop moving, you stop moving. And finally, don't, don't, don't give up. Just keep trying. Same thing with your work. When things go bad in business, you, if, you, if you quit, you're not going to get to the next person, right? And as I've learned a long time ago, you can't get to second base with your feet firmly planted on first base, all right? So you have to give yourself that opportunity. Um, High-intensity interval training is... It can be uh, 30 seconds on, five second or 10 second break and another 30 seconds. So you can do the three minute plank. You can do little other exercises and stuff like that. If you wanna learn more from there, again, you can, you can reach out to me. Nutrition, I'm not a nutritionist, but I do like my smoothies and I put lots of veggie or not veggies, but um, greens in there, um, peanut butter, bananas, uh, um, almonds and things, mix that up and, and drink it after I work out. That's what I, I usually do. Um, and every once in a while, of course, I eat my bacon and eggs and ham and all that stuff. <laughs> I'm not ridiculously stupid, okay? This is important. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Righty, thank you. Awesome. I'll stop sharing my screen here. Stop sharing. Boom. There Does anybody have any questions? There you go. You've given everybody uh, lots to think. Think about. Actually, you know what? It's so true, right? Baby steps uh, ready? Yeah. Uh, good presentation because uh, 
kudos to you. This is the first time you've done one live. So you did an awesome job. I want to say that. And number two, just the, the information you were sharing. I think it just uh, rubber breaks and shares like things that should tweak us. Annie, you got a question. No, I, I haven't got an actual question. Great presentation. I've just got a comment, actually. My daughter, she's been doing Taekwondo uh, for quite a number of years. And uh, it was actually something that uh, she started at the age of 10 and, and finished when she was, she stopped it at 13 due to other things. Uh, but there's only so many hours in a day. But it was enough to give her the focus and the concentration that it took to her, for her to get through a very demanding education and setting the goals for that. So I know it works. Yes, thank you. It, it sure does. It, it's helped a lot of uh, mm. students. It's helped a lot of kids. I've received many um, uh, emails from parents saying, thank you for helping my daughter gain her confidence. Mm. Uh, where I've had students now, there's one that turned 15 yesterday, and I've had, she's been a student of mine since she was five. So I've seen a lot of kids grow up, which is also quite cool. Uh, you know, you've seen that I've also had some who have grown and then they've bumped into me in the street and say, are you still in teaching martial arts? And of course, I have no recollection because they were little when they when I met them and then they got grown up. And now I'm going, OK, and they go, hey, Master Daniels, you still teaching Taekwondo? I say, yes. Well, my little one is three. So two more years, and they'll be with you. <laughs> it's kind of cool. But yes, that's really, really. Thank you for saying that. It does. It does help with the confidence and the focus. And helping them overcome things. It's great. So, Reddy, uh, if someone has uh, either taken Taekwondo before many moons ago, or uh, they want to start stretching, because I, I do remember, I do remember the uh, uh, folks. You know, you're taking your, you're stretching your leg to bring it up to almost to your your nose. You know, to get that stretch over time. Yeah. Uh, how long will that take for someone uh, in our age category to get back into that type of uh, flexibility? Well, it won't. It depends, again, as I mentioned, about commitment and time. If you're willing to do three to five minutes a day of, of stretching and you can do this in the morning, afternoon or evening before you go to bed, that can be part of your your bedtime routine. You can get that back within within, you know, a reasonable time, a couple of months. But you have to do it on a daily basis. It can't be, well, I'll do it once this week and then I'm not doing anything for two weeks. Hell yeah, it's not working. Well, of course it's not working. You're not giving it the opportunity at the time. It's just like your business. If you sit there and go, okay, well, this is great. I'm going to put in some effort today, but I won't do anything for two weeks or wait until somebody calls me. Really? Well, it won't work. It never does. So it has to be a commitment and consistent over time. And if you do that, you can get that back and, you know, um, just the ideas and the suggestions of the stretching and doing the stretching, different stretches that are simple. I do not want people to get hurt because then mm -hmm. it's pointless. Now you can't do anything. So it's take time and, and be cautious about what you're doing. But that's why I say the tension, breathe through the tension, feel the tension, and then exhale a little bit more, exhale a little bit more, and then take your time and do that. Did that answer yours there, Bernie? It certainly did. Thank you. What I love about it too is it was you're not uh, you're just saying everybody to commit to a bit. It doesn't have to be a lot to start. Just commit to something. That's right. Just do. I love it. Yeah. Just start. Just start, Margaret Ann. If you yep. if you start, then then you've already you've already made a commitment. But you have to commit to starting. And once you start, then you take your, your, your baby steps. As I said, you wouldn't feed a baby with a big spoon and choke them. So you're going to give them just, you know, a small step and say, okay, here's three minutes of stretching that we're going to do today. They're going to be nice, simple things to just get you going. If your goal is, my goal now is I can't touch my knees, then let's make that your goal and we'll get there. And then, okay, now I want to get to be able to touch my ankles now. We, we, we do that. Maybe I want to try and, and, and be able to, you know, do a long stride when I go for my walks. And again, that's also the other commitment is to go for walks. You know, we sit in our chairs all day and then the only walk we do is to the kitchen. We make supper, we sit back down, we, we eat, and then we go to bed. But even if you make the commitment to not just to go for a walk, but and a leisurely stroll to start, 
But then from there, start accelerating that and say, okay, I'm gonna start doing some speed walking. And sometimes you don't have to leave the house to do the walking. You can just do lots of leg raises and stepping like you're walking up the stairs. You know, um, if you do have stairs in your home, take advantage of them, go up and down them a few times. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. So, and that's, that's again, it's a start. There's no excuse when, when, when you really wanna figure, figure out a way. You know, our, Carol's a perfect example here because she's not feeling well, but she still wanted to participate in support. So you found a way. I'll yeah. be there. I won't have my camera on, but I will be there. So she made the commitment and I'm so grateful for a friend like her. She's been there for forever and uh, love her to death. She can